Hello there. How are you going? Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Uh, I'm going to quickly share that what this full armor of gold is. I quite often speak about it, and yet so many people have no idea what I'm talking about. You know, um, I don't get affected by bullying or any of that sort of stuff anymore. It's just, um, yeah, I have the armor on, and yeah, it's taken for me. So we introduced what the Armour of God is in previous article. Why is it important? It especially relates to the lives of Christian believers. Uh, we focus on the meaning and the purpose of each six pieces of armour of God in great detail. When taken all together, the belt of truth, truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of gospel, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit make up the whole armour of God that every true follower of Jesus Christ needs to wear. As a reminder... Uh, Christians, we are actively fighting battles that require putting on the whole armor of God, which is spiritual rather than physical in nature, in order to withstand the lies of Satan, the world, and our own sinful flesh. So let's look at Ephesians 6, 10, 18. Again, we consider why God would want us to put the whole armor of God rather than only choosing certain bits and pieces. So finally be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces in, of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil day and having all done to stand firm. Then for, therefore, having fastened the on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as the shoes for your feet, having put in the readiness given by the gospel of peace, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which will extinguish all the flaming darts from the hero one, evil one, and take up the helmet of salvation, listening at all times in the spirit with prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with perseverance, perseverance, making supplication. For the saints, Ephesians 6, 10, 18. In verse 11 and 13, the Apostle of Paul encourages us to put on or take up the whole armor of God, repeating twice that you need to put on this armor. As the Bible clearly states, you need the whole armor of God in order that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil and to be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. What are the schemes of the devil? We know since the beginning in Genesis 3 in the book of Job and in other books through the Bible, the devil Satan has been actively involved on earth, as the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. The gold of this age, Satan, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of God, of Christ, who is the image of God. Thus, as Christians, we need spiritual protection against the evil of this world, which oftentimes is not always clearly visible since our battles are spiritual in nature. So why is God's armor important? If the devil has been actively at work doing evil through the, throughout the biblical times, we know that he is still involved today. That's one of the biggest tricks that the devil ever played was making think, people think that Jesus was not real and therefore he was not real. Since Jesus has not returned yet, yeah, well, I'm not sure about that one. The devil has not yet been cast into the lake of fire, Revelations 20.10. Thankfully, we can rest in the promises of God, knowing that even through the life is filled with suffering and will eventually end one day. Isaiah 48, 8 states that the word of God will stand forever, meaning that God has the final say in everything. Satan cannot ruin God's plans. You might be going through pain and sadness now, but God tells us in Revelations 21.4, that when Jesus Christ returns to the earth, he will wipe every tear from their our eyes. There will be no more death or mourning for crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Until that day comes, we as followers of Jesus must live our lives here on earth to please God, to resist the devil, the temptations of the world and our own sinful desires. But we do this by keeping the whole armour of God on at all times. Now let's take a closer look at the individual pieces of the whole armour meaning, starting with the belt of truth. Remember, the order that they are presented with in the Bible has its meaning and importance. So the belt of truth. We know that in God there is no sin, and all his words are true and alive. He is perfect in all his ways, Psalm 1830. 
whereas Satan was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there was is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks the native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. John 8, 44. Thus the belt of truth is in essence the truth we find in God himself and his word, whereas Satan's character displays the complete opposite to the truth of truth. The breastplate of righteousness, the second piece of the whole armor of God is the breastplate of righteousness, which we can understand by looking at God's righteous character. Throughout the Bible, God displays his righteous character, and King David, a man after God's heart, often wrote about God's righteousness in the book of Psalms. Psalms 11, 7 states, For the Lord is righteous, he loves righteous deeds, the upright shall behold his face. It is said in another part of the Bible that God is righteous in all the ways and kind in all these works. Psalm 145-17 If God is good and righteous, how do we know that we have any of the righteousness in us? The Bible is clear in Romans 3.11-12 that nobody is righteous by himself. Nobody does good apart from God seeking out for us. We are unrighteous without him. That is why the most righteous thing that God has already done for us was through the sacrifice on the cross that Jesus paid for behalf of our sins. Now, I, I've heard a couple of people say recently that Jesus was a thief. Now, I can f say by all means that Jesus was not a thief. Jesus was not a criminal. He was not a thief. He was not a criminal. He had not stolen, murdered, hurt, harmed, anything like that. The reason he was sacrificed is because of what he was doing. He wasn't killed because he was a criminal in, you know, par on par with that. Shoes of the gospel. So to effective soldiers of God, we must be able to move around and spread his word. In Matthew 28, 16-20, Jesus called on his disciples as well as calling on all these future followers that would be us today to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing your neighbor in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. If you are not actively reaching out others with God's worth and the promise of salvation from sins through Jesus Christ's life, death, resurrection, then you need to be careful to make sure that you are not a lukewarm Christian. Those who claim to Jesus while being lukewarm and complacent in their faith, God's mouth, Revelation 3 16. Shield of faith to really protect you as a Christian and extinguish all the flame and darts of the evil one. The Bible says you must, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. Why would faith be represented as a shield in the armor of God? Faith in the Bible is defined in Hebrews 11 where faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We know that since Satan is the father of lies, and those who do not believe in God can challenge your faith in Jesus, by having faith in God and his promises, this will act as a shield to protect us from doubt and from the lies thrown at us from the world. Without solid faith in God and his promises, we will fail like Simon Peter, a disciple of Jesus, when he walked and sank because of his lack of faith, 22-33. So the helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation is a very critical piece, a very crucial piece of the spiritual armor as it involves protecting our head from the lies and the doubts about our salvation in Jesus that can be planted in our minds. Salvation is not something that we acquire on our own, but rather it's a precious gift that we never deserved, one that God freely gave through his son Jesus. Looking at back at Simon Peter, even though he lacked faith in Jesus many times throughout the Bible, even denying Jesus three times, Luke 22, 54, 62, God radically changed him to proclaim in Acts 14, 12, that there is salvation in no one else, for there is no much other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. At Jesus' second coming to earth, multitudes will cry out, shouting, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Revelation 7.10 The Sword of Spirit Looking back at our main passage from Ephesians 4, you need to take with you the Sword of Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Sword of Spirit is the key weapon in our spiritual arsenal that God has given us to win the battle across against the devil. The world's influence and our own sin nature, no Bible passage describes it more clearly in um, Hebrews 4, 12, 13. 
For the word of God is a living, active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. No creature is hidden from sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him whom we must give account. So putting on the whole arm of God in practice, the focus in the next time. I'll leave the link in the description for you. Thus far we examine the meaning and the importance of these six pieces that together make up the whole armor of God. Next you'll learn how to practically put it on it yourself. So, wherever you are, thanks for watching. You have a fantastic day. Raise your vibrations. Much love.